I want to go over this dive stretch run combination that a lot of people have been running lately and causing a lot of headaches uh, trying to stop it. Mainly because, like, it's just good in general. I mean, good football in general to, to mix in a outside run with, a, with an inside run. Especially when the outside run is so good, you know, to stop it, you really have to kind of overcommit as a user or start to shift your defense over to, to kind of gain an edge there. But that's just going to leave you exposed to that inside run. And now this, this kind of concept is obviously going to be in every single formation. But the best one I think that I've been seeing is out of the single back wide trips where you have this, this good stretch play and you have to that stretch you have a tight end and you have two uh, two wide receivers that are probably uh, of the better run blocking and then from there you have this dive play which is pretty quick hitting so it's a really good kind of one-two punch there now i just want to you know not take too long but go over what i think is the best defense to stop this type of combination so I'll go over stretch and that is the cover six or cover nine so in this case for 3-4 under, which I've been running, so I'd be going over the cover 6 and I'd align my cloud flat to the side that I think that they're going to be running the stretch to. So if I guess wrong, I can just flip it real quick, that's, that's not a big deal. So I'll call it cover 6. Now what I want here, so, so now if we look at the run fits. Our last line of defense here is that cornerback. Okay, so unlike a cover three, where he's gonna be the force defender is this outside linebacker here, and then the cornerback is out here because he's gotta account for the deep third, so he can't be up in the face ready to make a play on the ball. Okay, so and then from here, you know, you, you have some whatever, middle linebackers hopefully have some good block shedding. And yeah, you, you you probably you can pick whoever you want to to use her. I'd probably pick this guy because you can kind of you know try to get aggressive here, and then also if there's a dive, you can be kind of a, a full defender. So you can you can kind of take him inside a bit. So if, if it's a dive, you kind of fold inside. If it's a stretch, you kind of shoot this. And also, what I'll kind of add on to towards the end of the video here. If you put a 91 zone coverage linebacker in the middle here on this three receiver hook, he's gonna he's gonna cause a lot of issues. So he's gonna be really aggressive on slants, in routes, and stuff like that. And what's good is that unlike a cover two, so why why I wouldn't call just a cover two to defend the stretch here is because if we're in a cover two, actually we could just go into it. Uh, that's cover two man. We probably don't have it yet. Yeah, Tampa two. So this cornerback here is a run fit player, but I mean he's never gonna make a play on the ball whether it's a dive or a stretch. He might on a counter, but let's be honest, who's running counters in Madden 18? So then what'll happen is, and especially if you know you have to do this really if you're running a Tampa two, you're gonna have to put this guy in a deep blue. So then what's left? It's really just this guy right here. Okay, so it's kind of five blockers. It's a, and then this guy right here who's kind of off to the side anyway. So you're really exposed in the middle of the field. Now, if we kind of shift that responsibility over back to the cover six, oops. You don't have to move this guy. You can keep him around here. So he's gonna be a run fit. The reason is why, because you have now three deep zones. So you have the, the quarters on this side and then the half on this side, and then it's gonna be really tough to kind of squeeze it into this area here. Maybe you wanna still keep an eye on it with, with this guy. If they're running four verticals, you'll wanna carry with that slot, but anyway. But then really the main point of the cover six, other than having that, that force defender here for the stretch, is that this backside safety is gonna fill this hole. So he's gonna fill that hole for the dive. Okay, so now instead of for the dive where you have one player, in the, towards the middle you have three players. So you're gaining a lot here. And 
Yeah, so that's what I like. So yeah, if, if you're running cover six, really you always probably want to align your cloud to the trip side. So let, let's take a look at how that works here. So you see, now th that's what's important. You want to have, I'll tend to put safeties, high block shedding safeties like this Newberry Church or, or Sean Taylor or Landon Collins or something like that. Put them at the cornerback spot. You don't need them to be man coverage specialists. You're not going to be running a lot of man. You don't need them to be super fast because, I mean, this corner here is backed off. So he doesn't need to be a burner. And this corner is just playing this underneath cloud flat. So he doesn't need to be fast either. Now, mind you, Sean Taylor and those guys are actually really fast players. But you can get away with a guy like Barry Church here. And... I'd probably advise against press coverage. I think this cloud flat does better at shedding if he's in a cloud flat, if he's kind of in this five yard off alignment here because he kind of takes this better angle here. He'll take a better angle, make a shed, and then your running back will have nowhere to go really. Whereas if he's pressed here, he'll kind of get caught up here and the halfback can cut inside. Now, that's not going to happen every time, but a lot of the time, or most of the time, it'll happen. Now, sometimes like that, I mean, I just ran right into him, but sometimes he'll get caught up. I did I did a bit of testing. I think if you have some somebody like that has... And keep in mind, this is the best run-blocking wide receiver here, Carmichael. He has 78 run-blocking or something like that. If you have more block shed than, than that, you're going to win, I think, something like 70-75% of the time. If you have quite a bit less, so if you have Deion Sanders or something like that, you're going to block shed like almost nothing. So it's actually really, really beneficial to do that. So you see that? Like, you, you don't really have anywhere to go there. And then you'll, you'll be with, in case he gets blocked inside, you'll be with this defender ready to kind of scrape over. So the stretch is, I'd say, almost totally mitigated just by the fact of having this cornerback here. And then from there, you can kind of experiment, really, of what kind of alignment gives you the best, best results there without totally, uh, without totally over, over committing and exposing yourself. And then also what you want to do with your user. Do you want to shoot this gap here or do you want to kind of wait around here? Okay. So now, let's go back to the dive. Okay, dive. And same thing. Cover six. So yeah, you, you really have best of both worlds. You have best of cover four for the inside run, and you have the best of cover two for the outside run without really exposing yourself too much. So you watch this left side free, the free safety here, Sean Taylor. So he's, he's gonna take away that cutback lane. If you're a user somewhat here, you're gonna wanna plug this hole here, plug that hole there. So there really isn't anywhere to go. And then on top of that, if you wanna get really aggressive, you know, you can bring these safeties down here. And it, it's, it makes it really, really tough. So the stretch is kinda locked down, the, the dive is kind of locked down. I'm not going to say totally, you know, things happen. You're not going to win every single battle, but it's going to bring your chance of success way up. And yeah, I think that's really good. So then if you kind of look into passing, it's also interesting because this, this three receiver hook actually gets really, really involved here. So let's take a look at what he does against this deep in route. And then let's actually swap him out for 91 zone coverage. In my roster, I just, just for this video, I changed the zone coverage of Bobby Wagner to be 91. So if I do no middle linebacker flip. Go back to cover six. 
Look how aggressive he is here. And then for slant routes, he's not going to carry it all the way, but, but that quarter flat takes over. So you're kind of left over here to kind of take anything that's coming inside from the number two and number one receivers. So I think you can, I mean, this guy's not going to be perfect, let's face it, but he's almost like another half user. <laughs> so he's going to get aggressive on anything here. I think this quarter flat can be good sometimes. You can change into a cloud flat, but I think the quarter flat is good in, a, in some senses when you have, you know, a table route or a swing. He's going to crack down on that. But if he's if he's not there, he'll he'll kind of drift back onto onto some other routes from that number one. Now you can obviously still be really exposed to that quarter flat, so you, you don't want to mix it up a bit. Sometimes do sometimes do clouds, sometimes do hard flats, sometimes do quarters. Um, but other than that, I think you're really fundamentally solid. Get that 91 zone coverage player here. Get somebody with really high block shed over here and then right here just high tackling because a lot of times he might be one-on-one -on -one with that with that running back and you want to make sure you have that tackle so secure tackle or something like that okay so i definitely 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 suggest doing this you know pretty much every formation has your cover six or cover nine so there's nothing special you need to do other than just call it and get comfortable with it okay let me know how it goes and i'll see you in the next one